Hey guys, the Jukebox here with another quick album review, and today I wanted to talk about the new Depeche Mode record, Memento Mori. Depeche Mode are about as legendary as it gets. I mean, Violator is considered one of the best electronic slash industrial influenced albums of the entire 20th century, and with their fame just as rooted in MTV airplay as it is influence on modern music, there's no denying that there are very, very few bands that are as consistently exceptional and as consistently influential as Depeche Mode have been over the course of the past several decades. However, their 2017 release Spirit was a major letdown for even diehard fans due to how simply uninteresting and unengaging it felt, and the tragic passing of keyboardist Andy Fletcher in 2022 made it seem like it was time for Depeche Mode to finally take their hat out of the ring and let their influence just speak for itself at this point, but not so. Dave Gahan and Martin L. Gore have just continued on as a duo in honor of their fallen brother in the form of Andy Fletcher, and their latest studio album, Memento More, is surprisingly great. In fact, it's actually everything that Depeche Mode should sound like in the 2020s. Although it's far from perfect, Memento More feels like the most successfully dark album that the band have put out since 2005's Playing the Angel, which was arguably their last great album. All of the dark wave and dark ambient influences found here firmly build up a solid haunting atmosphere that's fairly engaging and certainly atmospheric to the point that it's worth returning to after more than a couple of listens. That being said, the record doesn't feel ice cold either in terms of tone, and this could largely be accredited to frontman David Gahan, whose ever welcoming yet still mysterious vocal presence has been a staple of Depeche Mode for decades at this point, with his voice sounding just as great in 2023 as it did during Depeche Mode's peak in the late 80s and early 90s. Additionally, the instrumental work of Martin Al Gore remains relatively low-key, yet he plays an incredibly integral role in the formation of the melodic and compositional structure of the album as a whole. Meanwhile, producer James Ford also deserves some credit here, as he's not only a multi-instrumentalist, but he provides the majority of the percussion work here, as well as bass work, synth work, and guitar work, among other things. You may know Ford as a member of a number of different projects, perhaps most notably The Last Shadow Puppets, a fantastic garage rock band featuring Alex Turner of the Arctic Monkeys, but he's more than just a guy from a good Arctic Monkey side project here. He's actually important to the album as a whole. More than anything, the heart of Memento Mori is what really defines it. Nothing about this album feels forced or like it was created with the pressure of a label or anything like that. In fact, I would go as far as to argue that this album almost feels like a celebration of Depeche Mode's career as well as where they are today. And although I won't confirm or deny that this album is a tribute to the late Andy Fletcher in any way, I do kind of feel like, at least from a sonic standpoint, it is, sort of. It almost feels like a celebration of the career that they had with him, and the celebration of them transitioning into a new period, celebrating his artistry and his legacy as a member of one of the most insanely influential and important electronic rock bands of all time. Maybe this isn't the return to form that some ride-or-die Depeche Mode fans wanted, but at the same time, it's a more-than-above-average album from a band that has now proven that they have every right to still exist and make music well after most of their peers have not only gone out of their prime, but just retired. I'm going to give this record 3.5 stars out of 5. And with that being said, that's the end of this quick album review. I've been Zane from the Infinite Jukebox. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.